Hi, this is the fellow passenger. This video is about using the wavetable synth in Ableton as a kind of granular synth with the help of a new Max for Live device that I've developed. A couple of things before we start. Firstly, you will be able to grab the new Max for Live device as well as this project file if you join me on Patreon. I will talk more about this at the end of the video. If you're completely new to wavetable synthesis, you may wish to check out another video that I've just released introducing the basics of wavetable synthesis. It's only a few minutes long. You'll find the link in the description. Otherwise, feel free to just follow along. We've got a new instance of the wavetable instrument open. The default patch sounds like this. And we can scrub through the wavetable. It's going to be easier to illustrate this example of the granular synthesis if we have a sound that is perhaps a little bit more recognizable. So I've recorded my voice counting to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to turn that into a wavetable by dragging that down into the wavetable instrument. Now we can hit, we can scrub through this one too. It's going to be a little bit easier to recognize if we go down an octave or two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To make this into a granular synth, we need to do a few things. So let's start with setting the position here at 50%. Then to control the grains, we're going to click on the matrix tab and we are going to attach LFO1 to, to the position. It's basically going to control this. And we set that to 50% as well. So if we open the LFO here, LFO1, we can see the wave shape. This is going to control the speed and the direction of the grain. You can choose whichever waveform you want, but I'm going to pick the triangle because the straight lines will allow us to hear the sample at a steady playback speed. You can hear that it's a bit fast, so then let's discuss the different parameters and how they relate to a granular synthesizer. So the rate will set the speed of your grain. The amount will set how big your grain is. At the moment, it will cover the entire sample. The shape will set the direction it's playing. If we have the tri triangle at its default setting, it will go up and then down, basically playing it forward and then backward again. So it's doing that ping pong motion. But the shape will allow us to change that. So if we have it at 100%, We'll set that back to 100. That will play it forward. If we set it to minus 100%, it's going to just play backward. So if we create a smaller window by decreasing decreasing the amount and increasing the speed a bit. And we can offset where that window or grain size is taking place. By moving the position slider, I'm going to set that back to 50%. We now have a monophonic granular synth. What I mean by that is, although the wavetable synth is polyphonic, each individual note will have its own amp envelope, it will have its own filter, but what it doesn't have unique to each note is the position of the grain. So let me try and illustrate this. If we just create a longer decaying note here. Yeah. 
Although that sounds quite cool, if I have set off a bunch of notes and then move the position, that will affect all the individual notes. And we want to move beyond that. We want the grains to be individual for each key that we press. To make this possible, we are going to need multiple wavetable synths. And each key you're pressing is going to trigger the next wavetable synth in the row, allowing each wavetable synth to have its own grain position. Let me show this to you. To be able to do this, we are going to group, put that in a group. And to make this easier to adjust, once we've built our instrument, I'm just going to uh, attach a few things to the macro. Let's say that we want to have the amp, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And we want to have the same for the LFO. We want to be able to set these parameters globally. We want to set the rate, we want to set the amount, we want to set the shape, and um, we want to be able to set the position, maybe. Do we want to set the position globally? No, we are going to go into the MIDI section here and use the random functionality. So every time we press a key, it's going to pick a random part of our wavetable where it's going to start. You can obviously play around with this. I've attached these to the macros now, but you can choose to have them all being random for each individual instance of these. So now when we have the first one set up, I'm going to open the chain here, and then I'm going to make four copies of this. And we want to be able to cycle through these. And here is where the new Max for Live device comes in. I'm going to set these four on zero, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to open this new Max for Live device, which is the TFP incrementer MIDI. The current value or the default value is zero. Every time this device will receive a MIDI note, whether that is a written sequence or whether you're just playing it on your keyboard, this value will increment with the amount, which is currently one. You can set that if you want to have bigger increments for some other purpose. And it will increment all the way up to, at the moment, the max value is 127. And then when it reaches that, it will revert to the minimum value, which is currently zero. We don't need 127 for this example. We want three because it goes from zero to three, which is these four steps. And then we map this to the chain selector here. So now when I'm pressing the MIDI key, you should see this stepping through step by step. So if we increase the delay here, as oh sorry, increase the release. We should hear that. Did I, ah, the random should be set to 50. That is my mistake. Let me just do a quick edit and we'll go and sort that out for all the instances. Okay, I've set them all to 50 now. So every time I press a key, we will get a slightly different grain being set off by each synthesizers, each, each of the wavetable synths. There we are, we got a polyphonic granular synth. You can, you can develop this further if you want to. Now we got a four voice version. You can obviously increase the number of voices you want to have, and you just have to change this accordingly. So you will have to set it to seven if you want to have an eight voice one, basically because we're including the zero. And you can also play around with randomizing 
things like the the shape rather than having that attached to um, to one of the parameters here. You can have that individual for each voice as well. There's lots of interesting things you can do. This device can also come in handy if you want to do something similar where you're cycling through, let's say, different effects, or you can make something like a Korg Monopoly synth where each oscillator has unique settings, which can be quite interesting. That's it for this video. But before we wrap up, there's a few things I would like to say. If you can support this channel via the Patreon, you would be able to get this product file, including the max for live device, as I mentioned at the beginning. I've also done a little update to my Patreon. I've got three different tiers, the basic tier, which allow you access to the files, the mid tier, which gives you a shout out on my channel. But also, in addition, now you will be able to join my Discord if you want to have a chat with me or other supporters of the channel. And then there is the top tier where you can get an hour of my time each month where we can chat about whatever you want to ask about. We can talk about your music or if you have questions about how I do particular things or if you just want to bounce ideas, whatever it might be. Your support would mean so much to me. And um, if you don't want to do the Patreon, you can maybe buy some of my merch in the merch store. And also, I got the album that I released earlier this year, which I'm really proud of, which is released on Point Source Arts. And on that note, Point Source Arts are doing a special promotion this month where you can buy the albums on there but you choose what you want to pay. So you should definitely go and check it out. There are lots of really talented artists there other than the fellow passenger. And at the very least, please like and subscribe if you like my content. It's one of the few ways for me to know that I'm making something that is being appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.